Uh, my name is Rylan Town, for those of you that don't know me, I go to UCLA, and I am the alumni of this class. Yeah, I'm Gerardo Gonzalez, and I'm here to UCLA, too. I'm Laura, and I go to San Diego State University, and um, I'm Valerie, um, I'm Lisa's lead, and I'm Lisa's dad. I'm Chanel, um, I go to Cal Poly Slow, and I was in this class too. <laughs> um, and, okay, unfortunately we couldn't get Matt here because he's in Paris. Uh, he got accepted into NYU, and he's majoring in Global Studies, uh, but the first the program at NYU is different from most in that when you're a global studies major, you spend your first year overseas. Um, he speaks like, I don't know, like four languages. French is, is really good at French. So he decided to go to Paris, and he made this little video for us. So I graduated Rigetti last year, 2013, and was accepted into New York University, and decided to spend my freshman year in Paris. Um, the biggest difference between high school and college, I would say, is what you put into your work. Instead of regurgitating information to you know, get a number, a score, a grade, you're working to get the knowledge that you're going to apply to your life and skills that you're going to be able to use in a career, or at least a job after graduating, and I think that's a lot more valuable way to learn than, you know, copying off each other before class starts, whatever you have to do to get the job done in high school. Um, so that's the difference between school. The difference between the United States and Paris is um, obviously the language. <laughs> uh, it's something you have to be familiar with because plenty of people who go to school here with me uh, had no experience of French until getting here. So that shouldn't be something to hold you back if uh, studying abroad is something you want to do. Um, the amount of opportunity that you find in a big city, not only academically, but also in your free time, really opens up a lot of doors. You know, you'll be able to engage with you know, art, culture, and public transportation is a great advantage of living in a big city as well. Um, Santa Maria hardly even has a bus system, but Paris has you know, a subway, a um, bus, you know, free bike, like a, <laughs> a public bike um, borrowing system. So there's lots of um, really great advantages to the infrastructure of a big city too. So um, I think if you're interested in having a more independent lifestyle and you know, being able to find your own personality and niche, then a big city is a good idea. Um, big university like NYU forces you to, to guide yourself through situations because the staff is not going to hold your hand uh, Way. Um, yeah. Um, do you have any questions? Ryland can probably get you in contact with me. And enjoy. <laughs> Sam, who's also not here, is in Washington, D.C. She got accepted into University of America, I believe. Um, so she will. Unfortunately, she'll be joining us next period via Skype. Um, so I guess I'll give like a short description about American University. American University is um, the number one school in social justice. And uh, at my school, 
we're kind of, since we're in D.C. and the White House is only about 20 minutes away, we do a lot in community service, we do a lot in um, social, uh, social justice work. Um, I myself, I'm in the leadership program at my school, and so in two weeks we're doing a summit um, centered around the language around sex um, and how if you think about it, sex is kind of talking about baseball, and in baseball, someone always loses. Well, we're trying to fix that so that everybody wins with it, and it's talking a lot about consent and just making sure that um, people are a lot more, they're a lot more thoughtful when thinking about sex so that um, rates of sexual assault on our campus goes down. Um, so that's like what I'm doing on campus and what my campus is really all about. Um, but I know, a bunch of you are probably going off to college, and I don't know how many of you are going out of state or like out of San Rio and County, but um, wherever you go, even if you're just going to Cal Poly Slow, it's going to be different than staying in Santa Maria um, because every place kind of has its own little culture. So I know for like me, I don't like people at all. <laughs> so I chose the smallest school I could possibly get into, American University. Um, has only 6,000 students, and like a lot of them live off campus, so it's like a small little school, so I don't have to deal with a lot of people. But even with the school as small as mine, like when I came here, and I came in the summer, when I came here, I was like thrown into a group of 40 students that they're like, be friends with. And so I had to try to learn how to be friends with people I didn't want to talk to. <laughs> and so you kind of have to learn how to get out of your bubble and you can make really good friends that way, but also realize that uh, a large majority of the campus you're just not gonna wanna socialize with, and that's fine, but you have to realize that you have to get out of your comfort level. Uh, there's no problem in just like, uh, me and my roommate, Allison, we call ourselves hermit because the hermits because we like to stay in Friday night rather than going out. That's fine, you're not being a bad college student, but also realize there's a lot on your campus that you could be doing. Um, you could go to events on your campus. Yesterday we had Dick Cheney on campus. Um, so you could go to events like that. I don't know if all schools are having people like Dick Cheney come. Um, or you could go to the Mixer on campus and join the sorority. There's a lot of things you could do that will get you involved on campus and that will show you what group of friends you really want to be around. And so I know for my summer program, that group of friends I'm still friends with today, but my leadership program, it's a different set of friends that I have. And so you, sort of like in high school, you have these different areas of friends that you are much more selective because the friends that you get in college are the ones that you want to spend most of your time with. Um, another thing that you kind of like have to worry about when you're moving from home to college is that you're eventually going to get homesick and when you first get there, it's not gonna hit. When you're there for like the first month, you're like, oh, it's like a summer camp, and you're like, this is totally cool. But around October is when it really starts to hit. If you're like on a semester schedule like I am, October is when like midterms are coming out. It's when you start getting hit hard with assignments, and you're just tired, and you wanna go home, and then you realize Thanksgiving's coming soon, and for those of you who get to go home, you get to go home soon. And that's when you really realize, like, you're not home anymore. You're going to be at your college for a while. And so it gets a little overwhelming um, because you're getting homesick. And that's completely fine. And there's a lot of resources on every campus to help you with that. A majority of them are free. And if you go to, like, orientation or one of your welcome week organizations, I'm sure they will tell you all the resources you can go to so that you can get over your homesickness. And just when you're getting homesick, talk about it. Don't just revel in your homesickness because it won't make it any better. Talk about it, share the misery with your roommates. That's what roommates are there for. So I know with my roommates, I complain all the time. It's just what we do and it makes us feel better so that when we leave, we're much happier people and we don't look like we just hate the world. So complain with your roommates, talk with your roommates, and don't be afraid to talk to other people if you're feeling like you need help with anything, whether it be school, you're homesick, or you just want to know what clubs and organizations to get into, go to the Mixer. Thank you, Sam. Thank you.
to create this panel um, is I felt personally that I would have loved to have this my senior year, um, so I could have been a little bit more prepared for my own experience. What is everybody's major? I'm political science. I'm neuroscience. I'm a scientist. I business. We might. <laughs> this is Hannah. By the way, she goes to UCSD. She graduated here. Sorry, I had an eye appointment and why I missed last period, most of this period. Um, but yeah, I'll just go ahead and introduce myself. My name's Hannah. Uh, I was in Dr. Preston's class two years ago. Um, probably the class that prepared me for college, which actually, no, not probably, definitely. Um, you know, I'm a second year, so I'm a sophomore. I'm majoring in marine biology with a science education minor, so I'll be a teacher and maybe take over Mr. Davis' job one day. Don't tell him. But yeah, sorry. It's 
we don't unless you're, you're like you already have a roommate like like Rylan and Bernardo like they pick roommates beforehand. It's really random. Like the only thing they ask you is if you smoke or not. Like that's all. Like for how like for. And so I said no. And luckily for me, like my seven roommates, they're all pretty chill. Um, I talk to some more than others. Some I see a lot more than others. Um, and. In these apartment complexes, it's not like split into majors, so you do meet a lot of people with a lot of different classes and a lot of different experiences. So that it's really cool. Like if you need another class, like hey, like what can I, what class can I take? Like you can take it with them maybe. And um, luckily for me, I have two other business majors in my room, so we have a lot of classes together. And um, I had a business law class my first quarter. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, like beforehand, I had no idea. Like I had to take a law class. It's so early, and uh, it was super hard, and it was mind-boggling. So my roommates helped me a lot. So like having a relationship with your roommates really helps. And like I think a lot of people are like worried about getting along with them, and it's actually really not that bad. Like you just have to give as much effort as they are willing to. And it's kind of a give and take. And of course, like you're not all gonna get along, be best friends. Luckily for me, my the girl that sleeps above me, we're like best friends. It just worked out for some reason. And um, like you guys will probably get into fights because you guys are going to live with each other for a whole year um, in little tight spaces. Luckily for me, I'm on the club tennis team, so I do get to go out a lot and just like stay out of my room. Um, a lot of times I go to the library and study with my roommates, just a lot easier. I don't have to like wait for other people that live in other, like across the campus to be like, hey, we want to study at the library. It's just like, hey, roommate, let's go to the library and study. Um, so that's cool. Um, you do, like Laura said, you do meet a lot of people like from where you live. And um, you do have to make the effort. Like a lot of the times our doors are open, like wide open from 7 a.m. So we, I wake up and there's random people in my room. But that's cool because you guys are friends and like you guys can count on each other and when things happen. Uh, and so, yeah, Housing is fun. It's important, like socially too, and like you have, it's a balance. Like, you have, you can't just be like, okay, well, I'm gonna hang out with my roommate every day and not do my homework until like ten minutes before the class, because you can't do that in college. Like, homeworks and like studying takes a good like three hours a day, like, more. Sorry. Um, okay, so dining. Um, unfortunately, Holly probably has the worst dining in every college you can ever go to. <laughs> Probably the worst. Um, luckily for me, I have a kitchen. So I, we have um, meal swipes. Um, it's, it's different for dorms and apartments, but we have meals and you can use that at, at like a dining place. And some places you can't use a meal swipe, so you have plus dollars. Um, that's like extra like cash kind of to, so you can buy food. Um, that's what I usually do, just because I do have a kitchen, so I can go to like a mar the market on campus and buy like fresh fruits and vegetables and actually try to cook. Um, other than that, um, I am on the club tennis team. I have I know upperclassmen. Uh, they bribe me into getting the meals, so that's where all my meal swipes go. At least I'm not wasting money. That's what my dad tells me. Um, and yeah, I mean you have to stay healthy, like you. Like it's important to eat, like you have to remember to go eat and use these meals because your parents or maybe yourself, you guys are working for this money and like you guys are paying for this dining plan and it's important to like use it wisely. Um, and it's also like dining halls, like you just sit right wherever and you meet people too. Like it's really easy, like everyone's super friendly, like which is weird because there's a lot of us. And it's, but everyone's super open. Like, like you just say, can I sit here? And they're like, yeah, yeah, like, come on. Like, all, all 10 of you, just sit. Um, but like, dining halls are super, like, always fun. Like, it's just like everyone's talking. There's little groups of like, football players, soccer players, swimmers, and like, you see like, how all of them like, uh, interact. And it's actually like, it's, it's a good social place. So, um, yeah, you, you really do need to eat healthy. So hopefully you can go to a college that has good dining. And if you do end up at Poly, it's okay. You'll do fine. You'll you'll live. <laughs>
I worked as board clerks here last year, and then I also worked down there um, as board clerks as well. And it was, I'm in big city, and the traffic, it, so it wasn't on campus, that's kind of thing. And the traffic to get there was just, it, would take, it was like five miles, like it took me an hour to get there every time I drive on it, it. It had an effect on my grades, it really did. Um, so after that, I just kind of quit. I wasn't into that. Um, I in the process of applying to become a referee. I refereed during my junior year. Uh, I think that's, I, I would imagine that'd be tough to get a job off campus. On campus is a little bit more flexible. Yeah. Uh, they usually work with you since they know that you're a student. Um, but I mean, I'm sure it can get demanding at times. Hopefully I get the job. intelligent uh, plus there was 180 girls in there and like 10 guys and out. well very intimidating still I took a and I know okay it sounds like all the classes I'm going to tell you sound like I'm not even going to college but these are the classes that you can take in college I took a dinosaurs and their relatives class um, which is really fun um, the professor was interesting um, yeah I'm not taking I'm not majoring in neuroscience so I don't have to take chemistry or any class like that Bernardo and I are actually also taking a class. Have you guys heard of Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle or Guantanamo Bay? Have you heard of those movies? Uh, Kumar is actually going to be our professor. It's called Hope, Change, and Fist Bumps, the uh, Obama, Young Americans in the Obama Presidency. Um, it's a Fiat Lux class. It's a one unit class. It's only five weeks. Um, but we thought that would be a pretty interesting class to take. Um, especially when we found out that that was our professor who is actually works in the White House. Um, so there are like really interesting GEs you can take. I know there's another Fiat Lux that teaches how to uh, do poker. Uh, James Franco teaches at our school, so I'm sure there's tons of girls that try to get into that class. Classes that you can take in college. Um, Those are all under kind of like humanities, or so, or like something and you get to choose
and especially if you get involved. I mean, we met guys playing at the Wooden Center, and we started in uh, an intramural basketball team, and now that's all we hang out. That's who we hang out with all the time now. Um, so get involved. That helps a lot. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you getting involved. I joined pet band um, at UC San Diego. We don't have a football team, so we don't have um, marching band. It's sad. But um, that started a good week before school actually started. So by the first day of school, I knew seniors, I knew juniors, sophomores, I knew at least three new freshmen, including my, or excuse me, not including my roommate. And the schools. Honestly, like all the big schools, um, or any of these schools, I'm sure. Uh, I know UCLA does, I know SDSU does. Uh, they put on events at the beginning of the week um, before you even start school. Yours was Aztec. Yeah, those was for six weeks. We had like, There's a lot. I met so many people just randomly. They come up to me and like, hey, what's the announcer or something? Yeah. Like that, you know. And then we have Bruin Bash where like Taiga and E40 perform. Um, and it was just a complete mob of people and everybody was uh, getting along. It's just, the schools really try to promote uh, social experiences so that people don't feel left out when they enter school. So the school will try to definitely help you out. What, what was that? What, how do you mount a some kid, some girl just like comes and jumps on my back and she's like, no, come on. She was. She happened to be in three of my classes. <laughs> um, there was like another one where, um, like, someone had to like pretend you're proposing to someone, and like it's really weird because like all the guys were proposing to another guy. And they were like, they're like, oh my god, I can't talk to a girl. Like it's college, like whatever. But uh, but uh, like there's a, the, a guy came up to me and he just got on his knees and like he. He's like my best friend. He's in, he's a business major as well. It's really weird because like uh, we I did meet a lot of people and a lot of people like you kind of don't really see a lot because they're different majors. Uh, so like you're lucky to stay in contact. So hopefully like you get that quick like um, spark and be like hey like what's your number? What's your name? Like where do you live? Uh, <laughs> Jowie is definitely important. Like you, uh, your group, like your your like your group is probably going to be like your family. Like, you're going to know every single one of them. You're probably going to most likely live near them. So like that's. I, I, I could probably talk to most of us that weekends consist of sleeping, generally, because you don't get much sleep during the week. Uh, <laughs> sleeping, catching up. Um, yeah. Naps yeah. are a big thing yeah. in college. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, great. the thing about the thing about college is that you don't go six or whatever every guys wake up six a.m. to two a.m. every day. Like that's not your two a.m. <laughs> two two. Yeah, so that's that's like not your day. I mean, sometimes you can't do that. But every, I mean, all of our schedules, I'm sure, vary. And sometimes, like I had this last quarter, I had Fridays completely off, so I had three day weekends. Uh, yeah, choose business. No. Yeah, choose business. Don't you get Fridays off. Um, but if you're a science major. Yeah, if you're a science major, you have a tougher life. Yeah, but you should definitely do it. They make more money in the end. That's a plus, and you get to help a lot of people. Um, but I'm sure it, I mean, does anybody want to specify about that? Wake up, breakfast, and I'll go to class. And like your classes will be like, you know, Monday, like Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. You're not going to have the same class every day. Um, so it's kind of like, I don't know, like, you get like blocks, it's just kind of like that. Um, yeah, so then I just, like, I'm usually done by my day at around like 11 a.m. classes um, in a short amount of time but I mean you get your book before like anything even starts like that's the biggest thing about this quarter so 
system. Um, you only have 10 weeks, midterms come up. I mean, I had, I had, a, I had one test and then I had four midterms. So, I mean, it comes up on you quick. And like I said earlier, you gotta make sure you, uh, you keep a schedule of yourself. Teachers will give out a syllabus, and it's your responsibility to read it and look at due dates, and they don't remind you. Yes. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Mr. Right. Yes. <laughs> they will give out the syllabus the first day, and you and you really have to memorize that. Thing. I think the biggest difference for me in um, high school and college was the upperclassmen. In high school, the upperclassmen just like dismissed freshmen. I mean. We've all had that experience of like, we were like nothing, and seniors and juniors are everything. But in college, it's a little more different. If you have like a problem, or like you have questions about college or anything beyond that, upperclassmen are actually really friendly. They'll help you, and um, personally, like, I, I joined a, a club called AMSA, it's the American Medical Student Association, and it's, since I'm pre-med, it's a pretty big club for me to be in. And the upperclassmen in there, they talk, they've taught me so much so far. And I'm just a freshman so far. And their experiences and their like mistakes in college, they've like told me so many of them. And it helps me in my uh, future to make better decisions. Better decisions. And um, that's been a big difference so far in my, just my freshman year. Exercise, sleeping, eating well, whatever you need to do, you guys uh, should figure a way to deal with that. Stress is another thing. This is what, like physically, um, what happens is when we're more stressed, like it's, there's studies that shows that like we take we intake more calories when we're more stressed. So um, that's why like the freshman year team is like there. So, um, but if you're in charge of like what you eat, you're in charge of like how much exercise. Um, I think it's important to keep that in mind and not allow yourself to like believe the myth that okay, uh, freshman 15 exists. Okay, so if I think it's normal, you know, so um, you just have to remember that you're in control of that. And then um, emotion. Oh, and then uh, yeah, emotionally, um, I think people neglect their emotional side a lot because it's not the side that most people see. Like people can be uh, depressed, but they can smile. 
So I think it's important to um, make sure to find help or to find a release that you can express yourself with people. Um, this college is going to be really hard. It's going to be a really big transition. And you're not going to have your family, you don't need your mom to, like, <laughs> to be with you all the time. So it's important to um, find somewhere that you can express yourself with. So like me, I like um, drawing and like doing art to like, help me out. And I talk to my sister about my day and stuff. So that's how I do it. So not just like enough um, different things are for everyone. So um, try to find what works for you and what can help you be successful. Um, with mentally, like, we're not always saying it's a lot of work, it's a lot of, it's a different kind of work, um, different kind of stress, so, um, seven classes, um, we and Ryan will talk about this, three classes in college is pretty much the equivalent of If I had to give you one last piece of advice, and it has nothing to do with academics, it has to do with if you're going to a new place, you're not going to be in Santa Maria anymore, so this is your chance to start from here. So whether you didn't like the person you were in high school, or the person, it wasn't the person you wanted to be, in college it's your chance to be the person you want to grow to be, and the type of person that you want to look like want to be a good role model for others. And so that's why I recommend that you think wisely as a person you want to be in college. It's going to be there the next four years of your life. So. Well, I'm covering social life, and you, as Bernardo said, you totally get to like recreate yourself, and um, it's like you kind of have to start all over, like the kindergarten again. You have to make new friends and be really friendly because it's important to have friends. Um, so, how do you make friends? <laughs> the first week of school is like the easiest time to make friends because everyone is also looking for friends. So that like first week is really crucial in meeting a lot of people. And like honestly, you just like have to like shake their hand. And it sounds really weird, but you're just like, hi, I'm Laura, and they just tell you their name, and then I don't know if you like them. I guess <laughs> it'll work out. And then so yeah, everyone is really friendly, and it's. It might seem kind of like, you know, strange, but it'll work out. Um, and then you can meet people by joining a club, as they were saying. Uh, I joined two clubs. I'm in a pre-pharmacy club, and I've met a lot of people in that. And then I'm also in a, like, a, um, like a libertarian club. And we have meetings every week and discuss, like, events that happen throughout the world. And then we go after and have, like, a social and, like, that's where, like, you get like closer with them and stuff. So joining a club's a good idea. And also to get involved, you can join an intramural team. There's like all kinds of things. If, I know like being an athlete in college is a lot of like stress and a lot of work and you have to be really good, but you could also play for fun and meet a lot of people that way. And you could, or you could join um, a sorority or a fraternity and that's another way to meet a lot of people. Or um, I know at San Diego State we had these things called, called Aztec Nights and what they are is like the first six weeks of school, like every, um, it was like Friday night and Saturday night they'd have these things, like one was like a paint party I went to and then another was just like, this like, there's like a DJ with lights and then that, or we have like a bowling alley and like so they really encourage all the new like freshmen to go and just meet people, like the whole school really just wants you to like make as many connections as you can. So yeah, we um, you can also meet people in class, and sometimes you're in like lecture hall, so you're sitting next to a different person every day because the class is so big and there's not assigned seating. But again, just talk to the people next to you, and it's really important to meet people in your class as well because you can um, like form like study groups, and because it's not going to be easy for you all your classes, most likely not. Um, or you can meet people in the gym if you like to work out, go to the gym with them, or like occasionally if you go to a party, you can meet them there. Um, just, and then also the last place where I met a lot of people is um, in my dorm. And then I, um, at my school there's like two kinds of living situations. There's like suites, which is 
like a suite and you have like your kitchen and stuff in there, or there's like standard dorms where there's you know, like 20 like rooms on a side and it's just a dorm and there's no like kitchen or anything and that's what I live in and everyone can like leave their door open and people come in and out and you meet a lot of people that way and I've met like a lot of my close friends on my floor and on the floor below me and we also have like a study lounge where people there's a TV in there and people go in there to hang out and I've become really close with a lot of people on my floor. So yeah, those are pretty much like most of the ways to meet people, or if you already know someone there. But I really, I know people who went to a school thinking like, oh, I already have those two friends there. I'm not gonna like do a lot to make connections, and then they ended up not liking it because um, like they didn't have enough friends. So you definitely need to like go out of your comfort zone, even if you're shy. Like you really, really should. I recommend it. Um, because here in like Oregon and Santa Maria, you went to like elementary school, then junior high, and then high school. You probably had the same friends for years now. There, you're all new, and you just have to <coughs> be outgoing and really do your best. Um, so as for social life, it's really nice to be really social, but don't let it like take over your life. Um, you have to always also keep track of like your grades and like. Like, I mean, like me, my grades went a little down at the beginning, but I got that back up. Um, so you have to like have like time management and just definitely meet people, but also like stay on top of everything else. Also, have to make connections with your teachers. It's really important because here, like your your um, your class is like 20, 30 people, and y'all know Dr. Preston. Like, I'm in class with 500 people. Like my professors, they wouldn't even know I existed unless I didn't go to their office hours. Questions, I want to leave time for that. The only thing I was going to ask the panel is, you remember how strange and foreign some of the experiences around this course were to you coming out of Rigetti? And a lot of this year's students didn't have the benefit of having me in the 10th grade. They met me for the first time through this course. Can you speak to your experiences without my biasing you? I just want to prompt you to think out loud as to what elements of the course were challenging or helpful to you in looking back in 2020 hindsight, and then maybe we can take some questions and have some discussion. Now that I look back at your essays, actually list them, because now we can write papers, so enjoy his essays when you can. Um, I think the biggest part of this class is the independence that Dr. Preston gives you. Um, I know a lot of uh, teachers can often cry and always on top of you, and Dr. Preston usually lets you do your own thing. In college, the professors, like Laura said, they won't even know your name. So it is a ton of new independence. And I know I see some of you guys like, oh my gosh, it's uh, scary. I'm not trying to scare you at all. It's completely exciting. But it is a ton of independence that this class will prepare you for. And I know you've like heard all this before, like this guy, it's kind of like oh, it's the same thing, but it's like really true, like this, this is real. <laughs> you have to be on top of it and definitely like the writing. I know like some, we had like in this class, I remember having to read just a lot of things. I, some I really didn't enjoy them, but they helped me a lot in my writing like, that last semester. 